Hello and welcome to another Jog Vlogs. This session is going to be looking at physical river processes again, but this time it's going to be covering all the different physical processes which we didn't look at in the last session. So really we're focusing on the impact that weather and climate have on river landscapes um, alongside obviously the erosion, transportation, weathering, mass movement that we looked at in the last session. So this session is very much um, a kind of a me talking and you writing kind of session. We call it chalk and talk um, in teaching terms, um, where uh, there's not a great deal um, of emphasis in the exam f from this particular section. Or well, so far there hasn't been. Not to say that you can ignore it completely, because there are times which like little bits of it and snippets of it are, are very much relevant. So we're going to be looking at how short-term weather events, basically storms um, and droughts, can affect river processes, landforms and landscapes. And it's pretty straightforward stuff to be to be honest with you. But so it's just a case of I'll explain the notes, and I've got a sort of a bit of a, a geography exam skills practice w woven into this as well. So it's not completely um, just boring, wasted time. So um, drought. We'll start with drought, and you can see on here you've got a map. Um, of the UK, which shows the percentage of rainfall or average rainfall totals um, between 1981 and 2010. So, so we're looking at um, the total rainfall, average rainfall, so annual rainfall over a 30 year period. So this gives us a fairly reliable indicator about kind of rainfall patterns. What you can see is that the wettest parts on average of the United Kingdom or Great Britain, sorry, no, United Kingdom, um, are the, the north and west, uh, particularly this west coast of Scotland here. And then your drier parts, which are kind of the darkest brown, are very much central um, England um, and uh, East Anglia as well. So you can see that obviously the, the average the uh, rainfall kind of patterns as we go um, are, are varying. Now there is a, a video attached to this, I don't know if it's a YouTube one, no, it's, 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 this one is saved on 365 um, which will just talk to you a little bit about river levels and drought and water quality and stuff like that. But in summary, drought affects UK rivers um, because it reduces the amount of water in them. Okay, That's a fairly logical thing to, to, to consider. If there's less water coming out of the sky, there's less water getting into rivers eventually, so the level of the river drops. And if the level of the river drops, more of the river is um, essentially being acted on by friction. So if you imagine a really, really full river, okay, imagine like uh, there's like a little U shape, okay, here, and that U shape is full to the brim with water, okay, that's a river channel full of water. Only the bits where the water is touching the banks and bases is, is there friction. If, and so proportionally, if it's a full river, there is less of the water touching the banks and, and the bed than if the water is or the river is half full. Proportionally speaking, if it's half full, a greater amount of that water is touching something that provides friction. And now what that does is it reduces the flow and the, the speed of the river, the velocity goes down. So not only is river's flow reduced, but that then slows it down as well. And because it slows it down, there's less energy. And we know from last lesson, that the less energy there is in a river, the more likely it is to deposit. So there you go, sediment is deposited when rivers are in drought. Now, once you've experienced the drought period, and the drought period finishes or, or you know, rain starts to come again, you haven't now got the same capacity in the river. Because when rivers deposit sediment, they don't just they don't deposit it in a nice place outside the river channel they dump it at the bottom of the river. And what that means is the river is now effectively shallower. So the river channel becomes shallower and that can lead to more chance of flooding. So you are actually at your highest risk of flooding after a period of drought, particularly if you've got kind of a, a one rainstorm event. So there is a greater chance of flooding after a drought because the river has less capacity. All right, so pause the screen, jot all this down and that really summarizes how drought can affect UK rivers. And once you're ready, you can unpause the screen and then I will um, carry on with the next part of the session. Okay, so the opposite that can happen, uh, flooding or excessive rainfall, um, is the other obvious thing of how weather and climate can affect rivers. So 
we've looked at how drought can affect rivers. It can actually lead to flooding because it leads to deposition, reduces the channel capacity. Um, but another thing that leads to flooding, uh, it's never very good, unfortunately, flooding either way, is when you get too much rainfall rather than not enough rainfall. And we are seeing a combination of more droughts and more floods at the same time. So, and again, it makes sense that more floods are going to happen if more droughts are happening. So there's a, a handout on 365 which contains these two maps and um, the, these two graphs and another map here. Now, all I want you to do, and this is, the, this is the only thing really that I'd like you, that's a bit of a challenge today, the handout with all those five diagrams on it, these two plus these three, I just want you to interpret it. I'm not going to tell you very much about it. The questions that are on the sheet are really asking you to look at these to see if you understand what you see. Because a massively important um, skill for exams is the ability to look at a graph, and there will be graphs and charts and maps in one of your exams, or all of your exams to be honest, and you will be expected to know what they show. It won't always be really obvious what they show you know it might be a bar chart that's pretty straightforward but you still need to interpret those those graphs those tables those maps those diagrams if you can't interpret them through a bit of logic and just a little bit of time and a bit of care you run the risk of missing marks losing marks etc and often there's something you have to do you normally have to complete a bar chart or complete a line graph and you'd be amazed at how many people just miss those questions out i don't understand why they just be a bit careless so the handout that's on 365, which contains these five, plus some questions, is um, essentially just my way of checking that you are able to interpret maps, graphs, charts quite well. I would say the hardest one to interpret is this one, but it's not really very difficult, I don't think. Um, but each of them has their own kind of little question, which is going to help you try and interpret it a bit more. All right. So that is the task, those five diagrams. Um, and actually, this one I'm going to talk to you about in a second. So pause the screen, answer that sheet with those questions on it, and when you're ready, you can unpause, and I will go through some extra stuff for you. Okay, so hopefully you've had a, a, an idea, and, and you know, essentially in summary, this one is showing you flood warnings, um, so you can see the flood warnings are furthest um, west, to the southwest of the UK, um, and you've also got kind of large sort of flood warning, flood warning areas in um, on the, along the Thames through Oxford and London, etc. And that kind of pretty much coincides, not completely, but pretty much coincides with these rainfall totals where you've had, um, you know, 50 to 75% of the annual rainfall in just three months, which is pretty you know, a lot of rain. Um, this is a bar chart and, and hopefully you just spotted, you should have spotted, sorry, that the um, River Thames was above its usual range in every single one of these places. Um, and in a couple of the places, Chertsey, Shepparton, Walton, Sunbury, it actually reached or exceeded the record levels that that river had ever seen. So this is all from the River Thames, and these are all little settlements along the River Thames, okay, around here, um, and you can see that actually every one of them was above the usual range, um, and some of them had gone well above, sorry, so that's the record level which hadn't reached, but in these four places, it actually had reached record height levels um, of, of flood or flow, sorry. Um, this is just a, a closer up version. So effectively, you can see that although London, which is further along the Thames, should also have flood warning, flood alerts, it doesn't. And the reason being, London is very heavily managed, heavily protected, whereas actually the further west you go, it tends to look like there's you know, a bit more of a problem. Staines is probably the most um, impacted here, but... Um, it might just be that Staines has lower economic, eco, eco, sorry, economic value. You know, I'll get my, get my teeth in, Mr. Halls. Economic value and therefore maybe has less protection. Or there might be a variety of factors leading to maybe Slough and Staines becoming a bit more at risk. Of, of, but I'd certainly say it doesn't get worse the further east it goes. Now this graph, and apologies if a bell rings in a second, um, this graph is um, hopefully showing you that although the rainfall patterns fluctuate, they go up and down and always have done, you should start to really recognise that the fluctuations are becoming more extreme. So since sort of the 1980s, there's a bigger amount of extra rainfall and, and deeper droughts 
than there has been over the previous kind of time period. You've got some spells of lower and higher ones, but you know, generally speaking, we're getting more extreme flood and drought events. And you can see it looks like it's tightening up. So we're getting much more extremes um, happening more of the time. Okay, so that's what that's going to lead into my final slide from this session, which is going to require you to write a few more notes. So how this last graph ties into um, the the last slide is, and let's just click on that. Sorry, I'm allowed to click off. Um, is with regards to climate change and kind of futures. So essentially, most climate scientists now are in agreement that, um, and I say most, we're talking 99 point whatever percent. Um, that global temperatures um, are rising. That's irrefutable, they are. It's just the cause that is uh, debated. But because of that rise, they think that essentially there's going to be more extreme events, like more extreme drought, more extreme storms taking place. And, and that graph really shows evidence of that actually taking place already. So as the Earth heats up, more evaporation occurs, more moisture can be held in the atmosphere because warm air can hold more moisture than cooler air. So the warmer the air, the warmer the temperature of the earth, the more moisture can be stored in the atmosphere, which means that when it goes, it really goes, and you get bigger storms. Um, now those bigger storms mean you can get more flooding, uh, but also the, ch the charge, the recharge um, point between rainfall events can be bigger as well. So you, get, you can get drier periods because the air around can hold more moisture before it has to give it up. So if the air can hold more moisture before it gives it up. It means it can take longer for um, drought periods to last. So drought periods can last a lot longer. And then when it does rain, it really goes for it, it really rains. So um, as a result of obviously this risk and this future projection and everything like that, and the graph that you've just seen from the 80s onwards and how that's been, you know, to some extent in evidence, even in just the UK, um, the Environment Agency and the Met Office so the Met Office of the, uh, you know, the, the, the weather people and the Environment Agency, those people that, that look at flood management and shoreline management plans and things like that uh, in coasts, they are working together to try and prepare that uh, or f sorry, prepare for any future flood issues as a result of this extreme kind of drought, flood, drought, flood, drought, flood fluctuation. Okay, so that again is more notes that you need to write down because you need to be aware of the impact that climate change is having or potentially having on our planning going forward for river flooding not just for looking at sea level rise and coastal flooding but you know you can see how river flooding is probably even more sensitive to this sort of thing okay so that um, once you've got these notes written down again pause the screen to make sure you have that is this session finished um, and then we'll be looking next time um, at the fourth rivers session okay so thank you very much for listening and i'll see you next time cheerio